What's going on guys? Sam Wicker here from So Chrissy Media. And today I'm gonna to be giving you a quick tutorial on how I go about doing renders in 3ds Max that involve not only just typical geometry renders, but also fume effect simulations. So for my normal geometry based renders, I use a third party renderer called V-Ray. It's quick, it provides fantastic results, and it has awesome features. But it doesn't play nice with fume effects. So when I render out fume effects, I use the standard default scan line render. And that's mainly because the features that V-Ray provides are fantastic lights, as well as great global illumination. Well, in Fume Effects, you can't use V-Ray lights because you're only able to use standard lights from 3ds Max, and global illumination is a bit overkill for Fume Effects renders. So I found this technique to work perfectly. So here I have a scene of a wall exploding, and if you wanna learn how to do this, it's from a earlier tutorial series, check it out on the YouTube page. And I also have fume effects smoke acting as dust coming out from all of these fragments. You can see it right here. And this provides a ton of extra detail. And in the end, I'm going to composite it all in After Effects to do the two separate renders. So I rendered out the very first render without fume effects. And you can learn how to do render passes like this from V-Ray in our V-Ray render passes tutorial. Check out the link in the description or check out check it out on the website, or even click this annotation right here on screen, and you can check that out if you're interested. But the way I rendered this out without fume effects was I went into the environment tab, and I turned off the FusionWorks render. But now that we have just this standalone geometry render without fume effects, we need to turn it back on and have a render with only fume effects and not the geometry in the background. So I'm also going to turn off the exposure control that I had turned on with V-Ray, and I'm gonna turn off the environment map. Then I'm gonna head over to our render setup, and I'm just going to change the renderer from V-Ray to Scanline. Under the Common tab, and choose Scanline. All right, and now we're gonna press P to go into our perspective view, and you can see the two lights I had set up. I, had a, I have a V-Ray Sun, that's for the geometry, but I also have a standard target directional light for all the Fume Effects purposes, which is what I mentioned earlier because Fume Effects only works with the standard 3ds Max lights. So I'm going to turn this off now, but I'm going to turn this back on. I had this turned off so I could do the geometry render. And now I'm going to press C to go back to the camera view. Now we have one last thing we need to do. We have to change the materials in our scene with a matte shadow material so that they're only receiving shadows and casting shadows and we get an alpha channel out of it. So to do that, we're gonna press M, open up the material editor, and you can see that all of these materials from V-Ray are blank now because they aren't supported with our render, with our scan line render. But that's okay, we're just going to click an empty slot. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna rename it to matte shadow, press enter. And then I'm gonna select standard materials and I'm gonna choose matte shadow. And then so it will work with Fume Effects, I'm gonna check Apply Atmosphere and At Object Depth. Then I'm going to head over to the Select by Name, and I'm gonna select all of the fragments and the plane in our scene that we use in the geometry render, and I'm gonna simply apply the matte shadow material to them. So now we can get rid of this, and we're ready for our render. So I'm gonna go into the Render Elements, and here is all our old render elements that I rendered out for the V-Ray settings. And again, check out the V-Ray render pass tutorial if you're curious on that. So I'll delete those and I'm gonna add in all of the render passes I desire for my render. I don't have Fume Effects Fire, I just have Fume Effects Smoke. I'll also render out a Velocity Pass. I can do a Z-Depth Pass. And what I'm also gonna to wanna to do is a Shadow Pass and click OK. Now, for the tutorial's purposes, I'm not going to go in here and change these values for the Z-Depth or the Velocity. Uh, that's up to you to change those depending on your scene. So I'm gonna go back to the Common now, and, I'm can, and now I can change my output, and I can save it to my desktop. I like to use an OpenEXR at 32 bits. OK, you can save that out. Make sure everything is set to the right destination, and you can click Render. So our render just finished up. Here is the main window, and you can see if we click the alpha channel, we have our Fume Effects smoke and also our shadows from our Fume Effects simulation. So as you can see, this image is going to fit perfectly on top of our other geometry render to be able to allow us to have the Fume Effects pass 
on top of our geometry render and it's just going to look seamless. So we'll head over into After Effects and I'll show you how I go about compositing them together. All right, so here I am in Adobe After Effects and I imported the assets that I just rendered out. So I'm just gonna first drag in the geometry render. So here we have our geometry render. I'll fit this in the frame and we have an alpha channel as well. So I'll just add a quick background, new solid. I'll just do a gray background and add that at the bottom. All right, and now what we can do is we can add in our fume effects dust. So I brought in three different renders. We have just the dust, beauty pass. We have the fume effects dust and we have the shadow pass. So let's bring in this to show you what we'd be dealing with if we didn't render out those extra passes. All right, so it's kind of what we want, but all the, all the shadows, those look so harsh. We can't, we have no control over the opacity of those shadows. That's why we rendered out the individual passes. What we're able to do is we can delete that and we can bring in the Fume FX smoke. So now we have the smoke and then we also have the shadows, but they're separate. So I can press T and lower the opacity of the shadows. So now as you can see, because we did these render passes, we're able to manipulate all of these layers. So we can tint the smoke, we can make it black and white if we want, or we can make it, or pretend this is chalk warfare, we wanted to make it, make it a chalk dust color. We just have so much more freedom in our render. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and again, please be sure to check out the render passes tutorial for V-Ray if you're interested in that and want to learn how to do those geometry renders. And please be sure to check out this wall explosion series tutorial. Link will be in the description. You can learn how to create this. This is actually from our Chalk Warfare 3 short film. And also be sure to download the project files which are available for download with the wall explosion tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new tutorials and be sure to subscribe for more content. Thanks, guys.